My name is Adam Morito, and I've been a fisherman for over 25 years. In that time, I've seen some pretty incredible things happen on the water. Oh! Oh, 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 oh my god! I got it. Oh my god, Dad, look! Dad, look! Did you see that? For me, fishing is not just a sport. It's my purpose. So now, I've decided that it's time I share my life passion with all of you. Follow me around the island of Barbados as we catch, clean, and cook the amazing fish found in these waters. This is the opening series of On The Line. Today we're gonna go try and catch a big queen snapper, also known as the Onaga in the Pacific, off the Northeast Point. The north coast of Barbados is the point of the island where the Caribbean Sea meets the raw Atlantic Ocean. And when two water systems collide, it always makes for very rough water conditions. Queens are deep water fish. They live 700 to 1,000 feet below the surface around the bottom of deep pinnacles and other structure. So to catch them, we're using an electric reel and a specially designed deep drop rod with a four pound weight and five hooks baited with squid. Here we are at River Bay. We're on the east coast now, deep dropping. Finally get to show you guys we hooked up to a monster! Yeah! Out here with my buddy Logan Humphrey today. This is a good fish! 400 feet to go, coming up. These fish tend to give up about halfway to the surface. And we're using Mustad circle hooks. Circle hooks are always good when you're fishing deep because the fish have a much lower probability of getting off once that circle hook pierces their jaw. None of the locals here fish with circle hooks. They love J hooks. I don't understand it. But it works. Not for me, but for them. Come on, baby, bounce all the way up. There it is, coming up, floating up. Yeah, baby! Onaga! There you go. Wow. From the deep, 900 feet. Beautiful Onaga queen snapper. What a gorgeous fish. Not to be confused with the American red snapper or anything else. These fish are so delicious. They live in deep, deep water, cold, slow growing, no toxins down there. The meat is excellent. Look at that tail. You can see the, the sickle coming out on the tail. So when they get bigger, those sickles actually extend and they look like a, like a flame like fire. So the locals here call them flame tails. See their teeth? They have sharp pointy teeth, almost like a grouper, even though they are a snapper. And they feed on squid and any other bait fish that are down there in the deep. All right, we're gonna get back down there so we can get another one. Yep, there it is. There it is. Queenie. I think that one guy bit all the bait. Well, they're down there today. Now that we got some queens for dinner in the box, we headed to shallower water to try to find some other deep water snapper species, like the yellow eye. And we hooked up almost instantly. So we just started dropping off Animal Flower Cave here. You can see in the back in about 480 feet looking for these yellow eye. We found this little guy. They usually live with their friends, so there's probably a lot of these little ones down there. We're gonna try to find a bigger one. But these guys are excellent eating. They make great sashimi, great sushi. And just like any snapper, their dorsal spines are extremely spiky. That's their defense mechanism. They spike up when other predators are trying to eat them down there. Groupers, bigger snappers, shark. Come on, moss, get off here. See the moss on our line? About seven years ago, this moss showed up. Now it's all over the ocean. East coast, west coast, south, north, you cannot escape it. And it's affecting the charter boats because they troll for mahi and wahoo and marlin and your baits get stuck in this line everywhere you go. Here he comes, I see color. Here he comes, coming up. Nice yellow eye. Nice yellow eye. 
Yeah. There's his big brother. And now you can see the difference. That's a gorgeous fish. Beautiful white stripes. Gorgeous yellow eye. Same teeth like every other snapper. Sharp. These two fangs at the front here, they're indicative of most snappers. You can see that. So they chomp the prey, and then the prey gets stuck in the mouth. There is no escape, just like the moss. These get really big too. You can get them up to 25 pounds. This one's about four. So we'll try to go back to get a little bit bigger one. So we dropped down again. We just lost two huge bites. Don't know what they were, but we came up with this guy. This is a vermilion snapper, similar to a yellow eye but they don't have the yellow tinge, as you can see. Meat's a little bit darker, and they're more red throughout, but still, beautiful fish. Nice tinge. Oh, it's a shark, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. So these little sharks that live near the bottom, they're dangerous because of that. That spike will sever an artery that spike will go through any piece of flesh it comes in contact with. So you gotta be really careful when you're handling these guys. And they have two of them. One on the dorsal and one on the tail. Their eyes are green, they're nocturnal. They can see in the dark. Not much use for us except eating up our bait. Look at that spine, look at that spine right there. Yeah, if that got in you, you'd know about it you would not be in denial. All right, buddy. Back you go. Yellow eye. It's perfect for sashimi. Sushi made with a snapper only minutes out of the ocean is incredibly satisfying. And it makes for a great appetizer on just about any occasion. But before we head in for the day, we stopped at the reef off of Animal Flower Cave to see if we could hook into something surprising. So Logan just pulled out this schoolmaster snapper from the vertical jig. See those there? Look at those canines, they're like a mini Cubera. They've got really, really long, sharp teeth on their upper jaw that go in and attack fish. Got a good variety of fish today. These fish are beautiful. They got nice stripes, they got the yellow dorsals, kind of like the uh, vermilions and the yellow eye snapper. You get bit by one of these, you're also gonna know about it. So we just got another! That is a trophy schoolmaster anywhere in the world you go. Beautiful white stripes, orange scales, very tough. Let's see if I can get a shot of this guy's canines. Look at those fangs. Whew. So we've got our queen snapper here, so known as the Onaga. Let's see what kind of meat this one has on him. This electric toy knife is so much easier. Now that we have a good haul for the day, it's time to fillet the fish so that the meat can rest a bit before it's prepared. Almost all snapper have this firm white meat which can be prepared pretty much any way you can think of. And using the electric bubba knife, we make quick work out of the catch. See the difference in meat? Tonight we're taking our catch to a world-renowned restaurant called The Cliff. It's been widely praised as one of the best restaurants in the Caribbean, not just for the cuisine, but because of its reputation for perfection. Culinary director Matt Warswick has combined different cooking styles with a constantly changing a la carte menu that certainly meet the demands of the clientele found in this establishment. And there's giant tarpon right under your dinner table. All right, tonight we're at The Cliff. Got my good buddy Chef Matt cooking us everything we got today. Absolute beauty, knows how to make stuff pretty tasty. So let's get in there and uh, yeah. get it started. Let's go. All right, let's go. 
Come on. Oh, there we go. Slightly blackened, which is a Bajan thing. Loads of back and spices, seasons the fish as well. And then this we, is the Onaga that we got today, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Really meaty fish, this. dead firm, like super, super fresh. Only a few hours old, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Beautiful. And then we're just going to do some pan fried normal as it is, and then we can do the contracts for the guests at the table. Beautiful. Plus, we're going to do one sous vide as well, which we've had before. Oh, nice. So, just done that in a bit of olive oil, some seasoning, so you can see the different cooking techniques of how it's going to Beautiful. Work. Like with meat, you've got to rest your meat. Same with fish. You want to try and rest your fish as well. For what, at least an hour or two? Yeah, so you want to do cooking. it like before you, before you cook it, you want it to be nice and rested, even though it's super fresh. You can get fish which is actually super fresh. Too fresh? So, yeah, too fresh sometimes, yeah. So, obviously, it depends on the fish. Going to bring that up slowly, up in the pan, and that's going to get the nice coloration on, on the bottom side of the pan. And then, with, like we said, with the other one we've blackened, so it's basically essentially all we've done is marinate. Now, you worked for Gordon Ramsay at one point, right? Yeah, so in my last position, I was Gordon Ramsay at the Savoy in London, so I was there for about a year and a half. Before that, I uh, worked in a couple of restaurants throughout the UK. Uh, fortunate enough to gain a Michelin star, which is quite cool. Nice. And then, we find ourselves in sunny Barbados, which is quite, you know, quite interesting from all the way from Liverpool where I'm from, to go from there all the way to Barbados in about 10 year career or so. Wow, it's, it's fairly, a big it's fairly, step. Yeah, it's yeah. fairly incredible. We have a great team. The club has recently reopened uh, after a long time and then COVID happened in the middle. So the owner bought it, we refurbed it. And this is the new clip. Now, how did you become a chef? What was the inspiration behind all that? So, for me, I fell in love with eating food first, rather <laughs> Don't than we all? yeah, rather than yeah. cooking food. So, I was, uh, I, I just always liked good food. And for me, it's either good food or bad food. It could be any cuisine. It's either good or bad. You know, I'm really fortunate. I got into cooking by by mistake, and I just every, as soon as I got the job. As an apprentice chef, no experience necessary, but I could do that. So I did it, and from day one I loved it, because every day is completely different. It's, very, it's a very creative process. So one has just ripped the Look fish over that. now. She's got really nice coloration on the top of it. That's gorgeous. Those people put lemon on top of the fish, but I don't because I don't want the fish to taste like lemon. I want well, it to taste... That's the thing, and I feel like it cooks it a little bit too yeah. in the acid before yeah. you and put that, it in the Yeah, and that's not what... If you want to cover up the flavor, then stick a load of lemon on top of it. Sure. But we just want to, again, it's trying to treat it as sympathetically as you can and then bring the flavor out of that beautiful wow. fish and then put Look it on. Look at that butter. Look at that butter. Now we right cook there. with butter. Wow. There's never enough butter. So did you learn anything starting to cook in Barbados that you didn't learn before? Did any local knowledge seep into you? Or? I think most of it is more about sort of ingredient lead and using your resources because we are on an island and so even though we're surrounded by the sea, abundant fresh fish is not particularly available in a consistent amount. So that's just come up now. We've got a quite a bit of olive oil in it. Maybe finish that in the oven for a couple of minutes. That'll take that. But while well, that's out of the pan, that's resting that. So all of the most, it's just gonna, yeah, it's just going to relax because that that heat is unnatural to apply that sort of heat. So it's just going to relax it. Coming out here, this is the best part of our job. To be able to have this delivered and able to produce this like this, it's just incredible. So this is one that we've bagged on. So we call this sous vide. Sous vide means under pressure. So we put it in the bag, olive oil, season it, and then we pull all of the air out of it. So this, that's under pressure now in the bag. And that's been in a water bath for 54 degrees for about 20 minutes, let's say. And that's just, just so basically the idea of this is that it's just going to bring that fish up to the same temperature. So this is the sous vide? Yeah. Okay. So that's just, it's really nice and soft. So that all we're going to do is to finish that off. I'm going to put more olive oil on it and then put it under the grill and then I'll just bring it up to the right temperature. Beautiful. So at 64, 65 degrees. So this is the finished product from Chef Matt in the kitchen. This is the blackened Onaga snapper. Look when I cut into that. Look at this. Look at how flaky white that meat is. That is exactly what you want your fish to look like. If it doesn't look like that, you've overcooked it or done something seriously wrong. Oh my god. That is so good. 